And so let's go back and look at that and we'll give them a score of one to six on each one of those points. Thera is certainly a concentric ring of land and water. That fits perfectly, we'll give it six points. And Thera has red, black, and white stones for six more points. As for cold and warm water springs on the central island, give it six more points for getting that one exactly right. And the Minoan culture on the island, well, we'll give it six more points for that because that gives it the bull worship. And for submerged in a day and a night, well, if you include the tsunami, that's probably true too for five points. The middle walls, well, that's a little bit more difficult, uh, but the gypsum in the stone at Knossos that makes it shine, uh, that may very well uh, be part of the story. At, and we'll give it three points for that. 9,000 years before the time of Solon? Well, that's a tough one. But let us assume that the Egyptian uh, Greek translation uh, got it wrong by a factor of 10. Uh, if they did, then it's only 900 years, and that puts it pretty close. So we'll give them two points. The Atlantis disaster left behind a sea of impassable mud. Well, if that impassable mud was actually floating pumice, a raft of pumice, well, Farah could possibly be the cause. We'll give them two points. And if that 60,000 mile square plain uh, actually was 6,000 square miles and we were aggregating all the land that the uh, Minoans happened to occupy and cultivate, well, maybe. So we'll give them two points. Likewise, if you reduce that 200,000 man army uh, down to 20,000 men, that's at least plausible for ancient times. Now that business about uh, Atlantis being the size of uh, Libya and Asia combined, uh, let's take a look at that. First of all, Asia is only that portion of the western face of Anatolia. Uh, Libya could just be the area around uh, Cyrene, uh, which is uh, now uh, eastern Libya, and it only includes the coastline, so it could be quite small. There is another interpretation, and that is that it isn't uh, as large as Libya and Asia combined, but rather it is in between Libya and Asia. And if that's the correct interpretation, well, Thera is in between Libya and Asia for two more points. Now, for as far as uh, Thera being uh, an area, or even Crete being an area that was lush and uh, uh, had uh, lots of timber and uh, could grow two crops a year, uh, that doesn't ever seem to have been the case or at least it's not clear that it was ever the case. So we'll just award one point for that. Atlantis' chief god uh, was uh, Poseidon, but there's no indication that Poseidon was the chief god of either uh, Minoan Crete or Santorini. Uh, nevertheless, uh, this is not exactly impossible, and we'll give him one point for that. Now, this is a really significant symbol. Actually, you can only see it at this time of day when the sunlight starts to get low. What you've got here is the traditional mason's mark of Knossos. It's a double axe head. But just look what's been rammed into it. These are the prongs of a trident. Now, of course, the trident is the weapon of the almighty god of the sea, the deity that we now call Poseidon, the god that brought so much trouble to this island. Poseidon was fearsomely powerful in Minoan society, both the sea god and the earth shaker. He could inflict devastating punishments at will. This is yet another strong link to the Atlantis legend. According to Plato, Poseidon was the master of Atlantis, and when its people fell foul of him, their island was swallowed 
by the sea. Another element of the story of Atlantis is that Atlantis has a large stock of elephants. Now there's no indication that there were ever elephants on Thera. Uh, however, let us assume for the moment that instead of 900 years before Solon, it really was 9,000 years before the time of Solon. At that period of time, many of the islands uh, in the Mediterranean had dwarf elephants on them. And it's possible that Thera did also. However, Thera has, for as far as I can tell, always been mountainous, and elephants generally avoid mountainous terrain. So, just one point. Atlantis mined a Rickelkum. Now, we don't even have the foggiest idea what a Rickelkum was, much less whether or not Thera might have had it and neither did the ancients for as far as that goes. So uh, just one point for a Rick Elkham. Next, the Pillars of Hercules. We're fairly sure we know where the Pillars of Hercules were in ancient times. Uh, there are a couple of different versions of it, but in any event, the Pillars of Hercules was never something that Thera was beyond from the uh, Athens point of view at least. So, no points here. Finally, the Atlantis legend tells us precisely how wide various canals were, or how deep, or how wide land was at some particular point or the other in the capital city, and Thera doesn't match any of that. Now, your score may vary from mine considerably depending on how you wanted to hand out those points, but in any event, I'm rating only about 50% of the points for Thera. Uh, that's not a passing grade in anybody's calculus. Now before we leave Atlantis, uh, I'd like to go back to the Critias and show you what the ending looks like. Uh, the ending shows that uh, the morale, uh, the, the moral qualities of the uh, uh, people of Atlantis had deteriorated and Zeus called the meeting of the gods to see what they were going to do about it. And the story goes on uh, to show that at the end of the Critias, Plato cuts the story off in mid-sentence. Take a look at the bottom there. It's clearly not the end of the story. The ending sentence reads, Wherefore, he assembled together all the gods into that abode which they honor most, standing as it does at the center of all the universe, and beholding all things that partake of generation. And when he had assembled them, he spake thus. And then it stops. There's nothing more to the story. Why did Plato end it here? 